Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Think on These Things podcast. We are so glad that you're back and joining us today. We're looking forward to a great topic. It's not going to be controversial <laughs> at all because we don't we don't tackle controversial subjects oh, here. Sure. <laughs> um, no, we're looking forward to it. Hopefully you saw our last episode with the awesome um Zach Hammond in his book, Curiosity Versus Conviction. We literally just recorded with him. So if you haven't seen that, go back and watch it. We're trying to knock out a couple of podcasts today. So um, we're about to have a baby. She's about to have a baby. I, I'm just going to watch. But um, yeah. Just <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, we are almost there. Less yep. than two weeks away. Less than two weeks from meeting Charlie. So we're trying to get some podcasts out. Yeah, and, and we get miss a, you guys. We do. We miss doing them and we hope they're a blessing. And and, and so we're going to talk about something that's interesting today. Yeah. And um, this is probably going to be a, a, a popular, unpopular subject, <laughs> if that makes sense. And we're going to talk about divine order in the home. Yes. Um, and, and we're probably going to talk a little bit about the psychology of divine order, the, the, the scriptural references to sure. these um, and things of that nature. So we're going to dive right in. These are our opinions. Um, these yep. are our understandings of scripture. And it does not, I'm trying to give you a disclaimer for anybody that's watching. It does not necessarily um, mean that all who are on the Biblos Network would share sure. these opinions, sure. but these are, are our opinions of these. Um, and so we want to, we want to say that first and foremost. Um, so let's talk about divine order in the home. Um, now we do understand that, 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 um, the home is nuanced, right? That sure. it's not always a two parent home. Um, it's not always, uh, uh, a home that is in divine order because of maybe one of the family, one of the spouses or something like that is not in the church. So we do understand that, um, that there are some nuances there. We'll try to cover those. But when we talk about divine order, we're going to talk about the picture of what divine order is, the, the pattern. Absolutely. And then if we get the chance to, we can talk about the nuances. So let's talk a little bit about divine order, sweetie. Yeah. Well, one of the things I wanted to mention before we jump in is, mm -hmm. well, why is this important to talk about? Well, a lot of pastors, ministers, um, leaders watch this. And yeah. one of the things that we've discussed uh, together is that there really is a onslaught against the church of yeah. what the home is supposed yep, to true. look to look like and with all of the um attack on gender identity what is a man what is a woman what does that look like it's really fighting against what god has ordained yeah. for our homes and for our lives yeah. and so i feel like this is really important this is um you know this is necessary mm -hmm. to talk about what it should look like because that's what we're dealing with in our world today yeah it's true you know we we we're dealing with the real while we pursue the ideal. Yeah. And the ideal is um, being attacked pretty, pretty um, ardently right now. Uh, you know, with Disney. Um, we're, different Hollywood. Yeah, oh, yeah. Disney I mean, in particular is, so is in many. the news right now. Yeah, if you sure. read you read the news, you're seeing that. One movie's banned in 14 countries because of same-sex relationships, Marvel. You go through the list of things, and it's there. And there's an onslaught against <clears throat> the, the home in particular. Um, one of the largest social justice movements that we've seen in recent years that will remain, may, remain nameless on this podcast um, stated in their, in their mission that it was to destabilize uh, the nucleus of the Western home. Um, and, and I think, or deconstruct rather, the nucleus of the Western home. And I think w what we're finding is, is that God ordained uh, the way that it should be with creation. If he had it, if he would have desired it to be another way, he would have, or he would have created it. So, well, and I think one of the things that has raised some concern, I know with me is, as, I, as I, I've told you this, um, multiple times is that when we do preach or we do teach about divine order, yeah. 
that it has become such that it is a, it yeah. is controversial and yeah, people do yeah. become upset and i and that, that is my reservation like how has biblical teaching become controversial how has being yeah. um for me like speaking how has being the woman that god has called me to be um become something that we're afraid to teach about and afraid to talk about and afraid to um teach that hey this is what god has for us yeah because you know we um <laughs> we had father's day obviously recently and and i pre- preached a sermon and it was titled why your, your family needs their father. And it's funny. Like I said it when I preached that sermon is that I don't get up in fear talking about theology or, or doctrines. I don't, yeah. I don't fear that. Um, but when we get up and we talk about something like the father, there is a level of of worry that comes with that because of the the culture that surrounds that. Now, am I saying that I didn't do it? Lord, no. I got up there and preached it anyway because I felt in my spirit that I needed to do that. But I think the thing is, is that we cannot become so jaded by the world that we refuse to tell the truths of God's word. We know that there are doctrinal things that are truth. We, we know the oneness of God, the plan of salvation as laid out in the book of Acts chapter two and verse 38, so on and so forth. There are doctrinal truths that holiness Absolutely. as a standard of uh, inward and outward uh, lifestyle. Um, but those there are other truths that are in God's word that are the framework, the undergirding of the church. And the home yes. is one of those things Absolutely. in the beginning. We, 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 we see how God, well, I'll just give you a preview of my sermon, like looking at yes. Deuteronomy chapter, uh, what is it? Deuteronomy six and four. Hear, o Israel. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> hear, O Israel. And it was the Shema and it gave yes. us this command to hear. Yes. Here is to listen and obey, but it yes. didn't stop there. And it went down and it said, teach them diligently to your children. Yes. The divine order of the home is a structural undergirding. I listened to, to Pastor Joel Urshan preach on Father's Day. And there was a scripture in Proverbs that he uses as lesson or as a sermon text. And he talked about the father has a role. But then the mother, listen to the mother's law. Nice. There's laws that the mother creates. Yes. There's a divine order in the home. And here's the thing is that the pulpit can never overturn what the home is condoning. So the home has to be this undergirded principles and undergirded ideas that that keep the church together and moving forward. So when we talk about divine order, we're talking about the divine order and structure of the home that is the structural undergirding That's of right. the faith. That's right. That's right. I feel like um, I just, as a woman, I can never emphasize enough the importance of, um, you know, a woman being in the home, what God has called us yeah. to be, um, because then that allows my spouse, not that they can't without me, but I'm telling you when you're married, um, and you're pulling together and you're both striving to be what God has called you to be, yeah. um, how much easier it is oh, on yeah. my spouse when I'm in the role that God's called me to be in, yeah. then he is, um, more able, easily able to be in the role that God has called him to be in. But the adverse is also true yes. that when the husband is what God has called him to be, yeah, it makes it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, cause I'm not a woman, so I don't know, but it, it makes it not only easier, but desirable. Oh, it's freedom. Yeah. It's, it's freedom. Lo I, I love that. That's good. It's freedom because I think, I think when we talk about, um, biblical concepts. Um, it's so unpopular, uh, to talk about, uh, submission yeah. and y'all I'm, I'm, you know, opinionated about things and I have, you know, strong opinions and ideas. She's a strong and, woman. And yes, but I'll tell you, there is no, um, freedom yeah. uh, in Christ and freedom in my emotional well-being like 
submitting to the role that God has called me to be in. And I am able to accomplish so much more because I'm in line with where God has called me to be. Yeah. You know, I think that that's such a beautiful way of putting it. And, and what we'll find is that, so it goes back to Genesis, um, that God created man and woman. He created Adam and Eve at the fall um, the curse wasn't that Adam would have to work. People get confused about that. Um, the yeah. curse was that the ground, he would have to take dominion over the ground now, whereas the ground, when he would work, it would produce more freely from my understanding. And now he would have to, to fight and war against, Chill. yeah, like work yeah. against the thorns and the thistles. Yeah. Um, but the woman's was different. Yeah. Her desire will be into her husband. Yeah. Now desire, uh, it was this, one of the things that sparked this conversation was the, oh man, the kingdom speak podcast yeah, so on good. desire is very, very good. Shout out to kingdom speak. Um, but that's what spur, spurred this conversation is the desire will be into the husband. It doesn't mean that she's going to want him. I have a good joke for that, but I'll leave it. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Continue on. But it means that she's going to desire to rule. Yeah. Yeah. Over him. Yeah. To rule over your spouse as a woman is something that is derived from the, from original sin and the fall of man. Yeah. And that's an unpopular thought. I believe in strong women, but there's a difference in being strong. Well, well, and here's, and here's, and here's how it plays out. Okay. Let's just talk kind of about, talk about, it, talk on a, about it on a practical level. Some women may say, um, you know, oh no, I would never tell my husband what to do. Um, you know, he makes the decisions and this, that, and the other. Yep. Um, and, 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 and that's fine. But also, um, you know, I've seen many women use their emotions to manipulate, um, and, um, they take on issues and things and they will not let them go. Mm. And so they keep their husband in constant turmoil yeah. and because there's things in their spirit that they're unwilling to get rid of. And so there's a constant manipulation of emo of emotions. And, you know, as a, a pa he's a pastor and pastor's wife, um, we've seen families um, that are just destroyed because yeah. what happens is, um, and, and 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 I'm not just picking on on women in in this case, okay? Um, but we'll we'll do multiple examples. But a woman will take something on in her heart. Maybe she's having issues with other people at church, and she will not address what is in her spirit. Mm -hmm. And so then the spouse takes that on, and he gets in his spirit as well. And you know, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Yeah, like he yeah. wants to protect his wife. Of he course. wants to be the the man of playing the home. On yes. That. Yeah. yes, playing on that. Yes, playing. That desire. She knows that playing on that consciously or subconsciously. She knows that. Yes. Playing on that desire to protect or, mm -hmm. you know, the, um, maybe the wife will rise up in, you know, anger against the leadership of the church. And then this spouse feels the need to, like you said, protect his wife. And all of a sudden there's this power dynamic going yeah. on where the husband can't clearly step up and make the decisions that he needs to make because, mm -hmm. Because, you know, the wife is behind constantly, you know, putting a, you know, wedge in between and, and, and y'all, you know, this is, this can easily happen. Putting a wedge in between what the spouse feels he needs to do as the spiritual leader of well, the home. And then the, also the desire to protect his wife and make his wife happy. Yeah. And, and here's the thing is that so interesting <laughs> is that when a woman uses her emotions or, or man, because that's yeah, certainly possible, it is. uses their emotions to manipulate their spouse. Yeah. They're literally doing what the devil did as the snake in the garden. Yeah. That's good. They're beguiling their spouse. Yeah. Um, and that's a, that's a severe degradation of, 
of, of the human condition. When we use our emotions against other people, especially our spouse, whom we're supposed to love, husbands love your love your wives as Christ loved the church, even giving Himself for it. Um, I think I think that what we have to do is we have to be willing to to face ourselves honestly and openly when there's a dynamic in the home that isn't right, um, and and it is of God for a man to be the priest of the home and not lord over his wife but lead and love his wife. Of course. And it's a woman it's it's God's will for a woman to be submitted, not yes. subservient. Right. Cuz those are two different things. Yes. I've heard of men saying I can spank my wife. Oh. When she gets out of line. Oh my. That's just You've heard it here first. Absolutely <laughs> stupid. <laughs> And if you would like to call in, I can give you my cell phone number and we can talk about that. Oh, goodness. Because that's insane. <laughs> I'm not talking about that type of relationship. What I'm talking about is a, a working together because Christ is the head of the church. He's the head of man. And man is the head of woman. Yeah, and I, we're submitting to our our spouse as... As you are submitting to Christ. And that's the thing. It, that won't be hard. It won't be work because of that. Yeah. Because what we're doing is we're submitting some to someone for the woman. You're submitting to someone who is submitted to someone. Yeah. And uh, now if that man isn't submitted, yeah. it's not going to work. Yeah. If that man doesn't work, if, if a man work. provides not for his own, he's worse than an infidel. It, if a man doesn't work. It's yeah. not going to work. If he's abusive. He's, or, if he's abusive, yeah. it's not going to work. If he's okay. belittling, it's not going to work. And and, and 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 abuse goes a lot of ways. It's not just physical, mental and emotional abuse. That's right. You know, we have to make sure that we're in alignment. Yeah. Well, I know as um, a wife and um, as a leader, um, you know, I felt a check in my spirit at times because... You know, my husband being a pastor, he has a lot of pulls on him in many different directions. Yeah. And there's seasons of our life that are yeah. very busy and very. seasons of our life that are very pressing. And mm -hmm. we have young, we have young children. Itty we have bitties. another child on the way and, you know, like a week and a half. And so we'll have three children, three young children, five and, a dog. Five and under and a puppy. Yes. No, and so, it. but I have felt a check in my spirit at times because I realize that there's things that he feels like he needs to do. And if I'm not right, if I'm not where I need to be, then I could easily manipulate him away from doing what he needs to do. Um, not because he's weak or because you know i'm controlling the home but because his desire is to love and protect me and to care for our family and so i have to balance out what i'm saying what i'm expressing yeah. um with okay am i just sharing this or am i using this to manipulate his decisions and what he's going to do and and i believe that I believe that requires prayer mm -hmm. that requires submission that requires introspection yep. um, because of course, you know, we're not hiding things from our spouse or, um, you know, just stuffing our feelings or I'm not advocating for that. But what I am saying is that we have to balance our own desires with yeah. what our spouse feels that they need to do as the priest of our home. Of course, you know, he's in a different role as a pastor, but many of you watching may be pastors or pastor's wives or ministers and minister's wives. And I don't want to manipulate through my emotions and manipulate him away from doing what God has called him to do. Yeah. Or, or two, even if you break it down to a home level, like manipulate when, when you manipulate with your emotions, it creates a destabilization in the home. It does. It destabilizes, destabilizes the dynamic in the home. And it and, makes me sad when I see a spouse take on yeah. their spouse's battle and it's the destruction of the home Yeah, because because as as much as he is submitted to Christ, 
and I am submitted to him, we are accountable to each other. Yeah, and there's been times in our lives where, you know, he has come to me and he said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm kind of concerned about this. You know, what's, what's going on here. And there's been times I've come to him and I'm like, Hey, you know, what's, what's going on there? You know, what, how can we navigate through this? And, you know, we have encouraged each other to make a spiritual decision or, you know, for holding unforgiveness in our heart or if we're, you know, have a bad attitude about something that we're encouraging each other as husband and wife to say, hey, let's address this and like, how can I help? Yeah, because too, you know, the husband and wife are a team, right? Um, and and here's the thing about a team. If you've played team sports, the goal is for the team to win. That's right. And sometimes the team wins by banding together. Yeah. And other times the team wins by a spouse speaking truth to uh, to their spouse. That's right. And helping them to see the situation through the proper lens and proper context. And so we've both done that for each other. Absolutely. Been able to step back because the t it's all about the team win. It's all about the team win. What I've seen happen, and this is more from a marriage counselor aspect, is that if there is an onslaught of emotions mm -hmm. and manipulation on one side, on, the, on one party side, eventually the other side will, sh will shut down. Yeah, that's true. And we see that a lot. Not to say it's always a woman that's on a lot of emotions, right. but many times women are much more expressive. And yeah. so if a, if a man, emotional beings, if a man is is going to try and lead his family, yeah. um and it's a constant onslaught of emotion, manipulation, um you know, uh, there's all kinds of tactics. I've seen yeah. screaming. I've seen withholding. I've you know, seen, withdrawal. you know, criticizing. I've seen contempt, all of those things. Then eventually the man will withdraw. And then the woman, the spouse might be left thinking, why won't my husband rise up and do these things in our home? Why won't he take the lead? Well, you've fought for the lead. Mm -hmm. And you have pushed him away mm. and because you're not a team and now your home is out of order. Yeah. Because you're not a team because you're not a team. It's, That's it's still, it's still all about you. It's all about you. It's not about the team winning. You know, that's the thing is that the team winning is, is sacrificial. Um, give the husband giving himself for the wife. Well, it's more about the win than it is about being right. Yeah. Or wrong. Yeah. And 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 we're a part of a larger team. That's right. We're 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 a team, but we're a part of the kingdom of God. That's right. And that win takes precedent over personal win. So prayerfully, when you look at a team win, you're thinking as a as a kingdom win. Yeah. Well, and I was just gonna say, because I know we're running out of time really quickly, is that as a as a parent right now we have two girls mm -hmm. and we're gonna have a son thank god yeah as a parent um yeah these dynamics are are really important because mm -hmm. we're demonstrating to our girls yep. how a woman is to conduct herself yep. and how a man is to conduct himself mm -hmm. and to our son he's seeing how a man steps up and leads his family and how he treats his wife. And so one of the biggest concerns I have as a pastor's wife, as a leader, as a, as a therapist, when I see the home so out of order and a refusal to correct the home dynamics, um, the impact on the children, you may think, Oh, my, my kids are okay. We well, wait and see till it's time for them to be in a relationship and you have sons and you've had a really dominant mother um, that refuses to submit herself. And you wonder why the son is passive. Mm. The son won't step up and be a leader. The son won't be the priest of his home. Or you have a daughter and she rises up and manipulates through emotion 
manipulates through words so. and manipulates through, you know, withholding or criticism and contempt Get it, girl. and just emasculates men because that's what they've seen modeled in the home. And some mm. people will say, no, our home is fine. Our home is fine. And it's our because kids dysfunctions become your function. That's right. And you say our kids are fine. Well, just wait until they enter into their own relationship because mm. it's the truth that kids will model out what they've seen in their home. And yeah. so this is why this, this is so, this is so important. And, and it's, and it's a branching effect too. They will treat youth leaders that way. They will treat oh, leaders yeah. that way. They will treat pastors that way well, because what they've seen modeled in the relationships of the home, they will believe that that is the normal functioning. Yeah. And you know, I think the other thing too, is that, um, when a, 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 a home that's dysfunctional, negatively impacts the church yeah um and, and 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 you see that like my wife just said they treat the pastor they treat the student pastor they treat the youth leader they treat the you know the sunday school teacher and the list goes on and 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 what you do is you create dysfunctional members of the of the kingdom of god well i've seen i've seen this a lot a one member in the marriage will get hurt yeah say the say the um Say the husband gets hurt um, in church, and then the spouse takes that on and makes it their hurt too. And there becomes a lot of negative attitudes toward the church, um, toward leadership, toward different fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And then guess what happens to the kids? They take on a negative attitude toward church or a cavalier attitude toward church. Yeah. And it, it impacts the whole family when really in that situation where one spouse is hurt, then, you know, the other spouse has an opportunity to step up and say, Hey, you know, I'm seeing this. Like, how can we navigate? How can we navigate through this together? Yeah. Cause I'll be honest with you. Taking the, taking your spouse aside isn't always the answer. No. It's not because just because you're, you're on their side, but it's meaning. Yes. Right. Yeah, you're on their side, but uh, uh, accepting the hurt, defending poor behavior, defending poor behavior yeah. and just accepting yeah. that it is what it is and choosing to stay there. Absolutely. Yeah, see, that's, right. And that's a thing that, that w what we have to do is we have to be willing to tell our spouse the truth in love. Yeah. Yeah. Sit down and listen. Sit down and talk, um, because we cannot na we cannot navigate those things properly if we don't do that. And and I think I think we're, we're afraid to do that sometimes. We don't want to hurt our spouse. But the problem is, is that you can become male or female can become jaded as well. And I've, we've seen it. Absolutely, we've seen it. Uh, and as recent as the last couple of years with spouses taking on the battle of another spouse and they too become damaged, hurt and all of these things. Yeah. And then there's, you know, confirmation bias. Everybody's this way. It's always this way. Everybody's this way toward me. And I think, you know, there's this old saying that says, if one person has a problem with you, look at the person. If a trail of people have a problem with you, look at yourself. That's right. Um, and I think, we do ourselves, our spouse, and our family a, a, a great disservice yeah. if we're not willing to look at things objectively and not allow our emotions to cloud our judgment. Um, and, and God's divine order is created so that the here's the thing about divine order. It's not just so you can function. It's so you can flourish. That's right. That's right. Divine order is not this thing that's just... We're just going to get by. No, no, no. That's dysfunction. You just get by with dysfunction. Divine order is something where you can flourish and become and do all that God wants you to become and do. Oh, absolutely. It glorifies God so it much because it, it's like I said at the beginning of the, the podcast, being the man that God has called you to be, being the woman that God has called you to be. There's so much freedom in that. The heaviness and the load comes from being outside of the parameters 
um, that God has set for us, that God outside of the parameters of the roles that God has called us to be in. Um, and so, yes, it's designed so that we can flourish and we can thrive and we can keep that balance in the home and keep us where God has called us to be. I agree. Well, why don't you close us out? Thank you for joining us <laughs> for this podcast about divine order. Hopefully we didn't say anything that that's hurtful. And hopefully what it does is it opens up your understanding a little bit to how God desires your home to be. Um, and it takes both. If your spouse isn't fulfilling that role, fulfill yours and encourage them to fulfill theirs. That's right. Fulfill yours and encourage them to fulfill theirs. We didn't get into the nuances because we were dealing with the ideal today. Yeah, but we will. And we know future podcast. And we know there's a lot of nuances. Yeah. So fulfill God's divine order to the best of your capability. And God will bless you for it. Yes, he God will. will honor it. So you've been watching the Think on These Things podcast as always. Thank you for joining us. We love you. We appreciate you. And as always, you have been watching the Biblos Network. Mm-hmm.